So here's here's a question that like a lot of people want to know: Where exactly do the animals come from, and how many do you have? So we we have two centers right now. One of them is open in Hamilton, um, downtown Hamilton. Wonderful place. Kevin and Amanda run that facility. They have amazing staff. And we have our nature center that was in Ottawa that was in, on Bank Street that is now in Sarsfield that we're getting ready to open, hopefully, uh, in short order. Uh, between the two centers, we have about 800 animals. Of the 800 animals in our care, there's probably 75 to 80% of them are rescued. So they're animals that we're getting from municipal, provincial, federal authorities, or people who have animals that they simply can't care for them anymore. Um, you know, we do, we do help people with the placement of animals. If it's something that could be a reasonable pet animal, we often act almost as a midpoint between almost making, introducing them to somebody who might be able to help them, but we continue to help the person receiving the animals so they know that we could, they could help from our expertise. We have some animals that we've got from other zoos. Um, uh, our sloths came from a, a gentleman of a vet in Florida who breeds sloths. He breeds them for zoos and so forth. So that's where our sloths came from. But for the most part, the majority of the animals people see here are, are animals that we get as unwanted pets or, or seized or confiscated animals. When you're taking an animal that's been rescued, what's your mission out there? I, I, for us, if we're taking in like rescued animals, you know, you know we. We've done programs with animals, and for me, it doesn't matter what kind of animal we're utilizing for a program. It, it doesn't matter if it's a Fiji Island iguana or a bearded dragon that somebody has had as a pet, like how rare the animal is. When our prime demographic is, you know, three-year-olds to 12-year-olds, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter if the animals we're working with are these really exotic animals. Kids love lizards, they like snakes, they like tarantulas and scorpions. So we've said, look, there's a need for these animals to find a home. And that's really when people ask about, you know, what we plan to have, we don't really necessarily have a plan that way. It's, it's what's available. We're, but we're also constantly placing animals. We don't simply keep them. We have sent animals literally around the world. We've sent crocodiles and big snakes literally around the world to other zoos and facilities that uh, are able to, to care for them and, and help them. And many of the animals we even have today are Nile crocodile over there. We've had for about six, seven years. And that was from a, uh, a facility that closed down in Alberta. And literally the day we were picking up that animal, there was a veterinarian there who unfortunately was tasked with euthanizing any of the animals we could not take. Like it was literally, we took him on that day or he was being euthanized because we were the last resort. So for many of these animals, in particular the largest, larger snakes and crocodilians, we really are a last resort in Canada for many of these animals. And then we do our best. That animal's been on a surplus list for six years. He lives in a wonderful habitat. He's doing great. Super fun to work with. He is not shy, and uh, so so for us, you know, many of them like him. We are the last resort. Separate question: that that Nile croc. Um, why can't that animal be released back into the wild somewhere? So, in you know, a really common question that we get from people is is even I had someone email me saying like, look, your animals should be put back in the wild. It's not the way it works. Like. 100% of the animals that we receive that can get released back into the wild, we do put back in the wild. There's not one single animal in our care now or in the last 25 years that could have went back to the wild. Uh, most times when an animal has been like imported into Canada or even born here that ends up in the pet trade, we can't take a bearded dragon, send it back to Australia and tell them to put it back in the desert. You know, if that animal is carrying any diseases and, and they don't know where it's come from, There's the genetic diversity, they, they, they have to protect the genetics in those populations. If, if you introduce a virus, it could wipe them all out. So there's no country that would allow uh, us right now to send, let's say, a crocodile back to Venezuela to release into the wild. So the best we can hope for for these animals is that they end up in, in exceptional facilities. Obviously, we try to get them to accredited institutions wherever we can. We are an accredited zoo with Canada's accredited zoos and aquariums in the hopes that they can be utilized for educational programs or even some breeding programs. We are part of a team that moved a pair of critically endangered Orinoco crocodiles from Welland, Ontario 
to uh, Brownsville, Texas back in, I want to say, 2012. It was right around that period of time. And those crocodiles are now used as part of a species survival plan where they are breeding them, but they're breeding them in such a way to help protect the genetic diversity in the hopes that some of them could be released back into the wild. But something coming through the pet trade is almost never eligible. But local, we sometimes get calls for local tur turtles that people have taken uh, that they maybe have had for six months or eight months or a year that haven't come in contact with other reptiles or anything that could be a risk that we make sure they get back to where they've come from. We do that.